understand you act as a consultant to investment firms. Yes. Could you tell me in what areas of industry is your expertise? Sure. Uh, well, over the course of the last five years, I've become a generalist in the very true sense of the word. I started okay. out my career as a technology generalist, right. so hardware, software, clean tech, web 2.0. But since I've been working with emerging markets, and particularly in India, where every sector is in hyper growth mode, I've become a generalist because I've looked at deals in healthcare, education, financial services, agriculture. So my clients, which range mostly from capital providers, but also some social entrepreneurs, okay. span all of those industries. Wow. And I've done both early stage and growth investing, so they actually span different stages as wow. well. Wow, you've got a lot of experience in different areas. That's fantastic. A little bit in everything, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you look for in women entrepreneurs and startups that indicate interest to you in investing in their business? What's the key pieces for you? Uh, for me, I'm going to talk about personality and character traits first, okay. and then I'll talk about some business model archetypes that okay. I think are pretty good signs of success. Okay. In terms of personality and, and character, I look for people who are very transparent, very ethical, uh, highly passionate, mm -hmm. ha are very forward-looking, not just short-term oriented, but are long-term oriented, mm -hmm. and they've thought about a path to profitability which is reasonable and is not just showing the typical hockey stick that a lot of entrepreneurs want to show and a lot of VCs want to see. Mm -hmm. I also look to see how they plan to surround themselves with the right type of team um, okay. because a lot of founders have founder ideas and they're consumed with the business and they only see themselves in a leadership role but not every leader has to lead from <clears throat> you know that position. So I look to see how they thought about the organizational structure as well and how they thought about the operations of the firm. Um, but someone who's really prepared and very crisp and very articulate. And I allow for things like local languages, ESL, um, different MBTI personality types. Oh, okay. So I try and factor all of that in. Wow. Um, but I think there are some standards that I, I don't want to compromise on and okay. preparation is one of them and ethics and transparency. Um, and just general forward-looking nature. Okay. Uh, those are traits that I won't compromise on. Okay. And business model archetypes. Um, I look for people that are not necessarily um, doing incremental changes, mm -hmm. but are really doing more revolutionary changes. So more disruptive. Definitely more disruptive. And I think a lot of people say that they want to invest in that, but when but when an incremental technology comes around and it's incremental to a Google or a Skype or something else that has hit big, they're likely to invest in it. Safer. Yes, much mm. safer. Um, but as I mentioned, I have a high appetite for risk, so I definitely <laughs> look for the more disruptive organi uh, organizations and technologies. Mm, and also, um, the business models that sometimes are grounded in services. Yes. Because again, in emerging markets, um, technologies aren't it's, it's a means to an end. Right. Technologies in and of themselves, they don't have the IP laws, um, yes. the legal systems and the infrastructure are simply not there yes. um, to be able to build these types of technologies. And whereas uh, web technologies work well here, it's mobile technologies that work well in Indian Africa. So mm. you have to really translate what technology means. Mm. And in many of those countries, again, as I mentioned, services are really the revenue generating business models. Yes. So in my mind, if you're targeting those economies, coupling a product with a service, um, catering to the rising bottom of the pyramid, right. I love business models that speak to that. Right. Because if you're only focusing on the top 10% of the population which can afford your product or service, um, you may get the short-term gains now, Mm. but you don't, again, have a long-term view as to where the real wealth of the economy is going to come yes, from. Yes, yeah. Um, Growth wouldn't be there, would it? No, no. no. Yeah. So, uh, and I look for people who, again, have not thought about hyper-growth, but are really realistic about the milestones that they're going to have. Okay. So business models that, um, again, incorporate uh, buffers and missteps because it inevitably will happen. Yes. And I think most people always paint a very rosy best case scenario. Mm. So I like to look at business models which even at a base case mm. are going to do reasonably well. Mm. And where would you see women in this? Like have you seen many women pitching um, and do you find that they, they do, they are able to deliver these 
requirements that you have and how do you see that as compared to male startups? Yeah, well, I think I don't see that many women, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd like to encourage more. And lately, I've been mentoring a lot of women who are coming out of business school right. and engineering schools right. who either have an interest on creating a company yes. or financing and getting into venture capital. Right. So I think that trend might be changing. Yes. Um, we need more mentors. That's yes. great you're doing that. Yes. Yeah. Um, in terms of preparation, I feel like the women are very well prepared. Okay. But it's their delivery, which is what sets them back. Yes. Um, they're not confident in speaking. Yes. Um, they aren't um, looking to play on their strengths or yes. talk about their successes. Yes. Um, they're quite humble in their approach. And while I don't need to see the hockey stick, I do want to hear about why I should invest in you. And yes. um, your past successors may be a good indication of that. Yes. Um, the men I meet are oozing with confidence, More but, they, but they sometimes <laughs> lack often lack preparation. Yes. So okay. they like to shoot from the hip and okay. um, when I ask detailed questions, you know, they stick to the bigger bigger picture answers. Okay. Um, so and now I've seen enough business plans and heard enough pitches where I kind of know when someone, man or woman, knows what he's talking about versus not. Yeah. But those are the major differences I see. And then it's just a question of volume as well. I mean I see you know, 95% of the business plans I see are from men, 5% from women. Mark Sister said that it's a numbers game with women, really. Yeah. We just don't have the numbers. Yeah. yeah. But again, right. I think I think it's changing. Very encouraging. Yeah. Thank you. Um, advice for pitching is often correlated with dating, and as you know, my background is in the online dating yeah. industry. What sort of chemistry makes for a good match and is a success for both entrepreneur and venture capitalist? Yes. Well, I think the analogy that you make with dating is actually highly, highly accurate. Oh, good. And um, <clears throat> let me talk about it <clears throat> at a macro level, and then Please. I'll talk about it as a micro level, too. Fantastic. So venture catalysts, by um, the nature of the market and the nature of the capital that they have, they're more interested in deals which are harder to get, okay. um, which attract the interest of other capital providers. So. There's a running joke that um, you know VCs often say, "Well, we might be interested, but who else is interested? Yes. Because then I could be more interested." Yes. So, you know, I liken that very similar to dating. When other people show interest in you, your market value goes up. You're hot. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and anyway, so creating that scarcity value really, really helps versus if you shop your business plan around to everyone mm. or in the dating analogy, if you hit on everything, yes. no one's going to want to date you because yes. your stock value has gone down. So at a macro level, that's generally how the dynamics work. Okay. Um, and then at a micro level, when you're sitting across the table and it's a VC entrepreneur relationship, yes. Um, I think someone who challenges you um, and someone who um, can give you really good constructive feedback mm -hmm. and then conversely the person who's receiving that feedback mm. or challenging them back. Mm. I mean, to me, being in a relationship is all about being a better person mm. and challenging a partner to do so as well yes. and not making it so personal Yes, uh, because you're both trying to achieve a higher good. Yes. So that type of chemistry, I think, is really, really healthy. Okay. Um, and then I think leaving a little bit on the table so that you leave some room for a follow-up meeting. Okay. So as an entrepreneur, I would say, give me enough so that you entice me, okay. but don't tell me everything. Um, let me think that there's more I have to discover that whether it's upside potential or new channels I didn't think about. Yeah. But also let me feel comfortable that there's ways we can work together wow. um, okay. and collaborate so that the next phase of the business is a collaborative effort and it's just not you being singular about what you want to do. So this is a really interesting piece. It's almost like a, a seduction. Um, yes. That you're actually um, consciously keeping something back, possibly, to entice the VC to want to explore further. Absolutely. Oh, that is such a really interesting piece. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Sure.